Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Virtual University. In today's lesson, we will be looking at different ways of determining fact from opinion. And in the second half we will be, uh, of the lesson, we will be looking at different ways of indicating time sequences in practical scientific texts. Now, being able to dissociate facts from opinions is an essential first step in acquiring a critical ability. As a critical reader, you ought to be able to distinguish what are facts and what are opinions. Now, when most writers or speakers communicate, they include their opinions of a subject in what they are saying, in what they are writing. What they say is therefore at least partly biased. Now, while bias is unavoidable, writers do try to remain as objective as possible. Scientific reports, for example, are samples of writing in which authors try to be as factual as they can. However, there are other types of material, materials such as newspaper editorials, political speeches, advertisements, etc., where opinions are central to the, to the, uh, to the writing. In such writings, the author or the writer tries to convince his readers to change their minds and share his viewpoint. If you read editorials of newspapers, you will find that uh, somewhere at the end or near the end, the editor makes his opinion quite clear. He states it in a very clear manner. Now, it, this means that facts and opinions are valuable to writers, but it is the reader who ought to know the difference between the two in order to evaluate what they read. In other words, a skilled reader must be able to distinguish fact from, opi from opinion. Now, uh, I'm sure uh, this is something you already do without realizing it. I'm sure you are able to distinguish fact from opinion. But most of the time, most of the time when we talk, you will notice that we do mix facts with opinion. And in today's lesson, we will try to learn you will try to learn to sift fact from opinion. You know the meaning of sift? It is to separate, to separate fact from opinion. Now what is fact? A fact is a statement that can be proved true through objective of evidence. It's a statement that can be proved true through objective evidence. Now this evidence may be physical proof, it may be the testimony of witnesses and this testimony could be spoken or written. For example, if you have this statement, the neem tree in our garden is 25 feet tall. Yes, the neem tree in our garden is 25 feet tall. Well, anyone can go and measure the tree and confirm or disprove the fact. <coughs> it is either 25 feet or it isn't and that statement can be verified. The next statement. The law museum is the oldest museum in Pakistan. The Lahore museum is the oldest museum in Pakistan. Anyone interested in checking out, any researcher can check with historical publications, historical documents and find out if 
the museum is truly old, is, is, is truly the oldest in Pakistan. The third statement, Pakistan won the 1992 World Cup, Cricket World Cup. Anyone interested in uh, sports can check the sports record and confirm this. So these were three statements, all dealing with facts which could be proved or otherwise just by checking. Now we turn to opinion. What's an opinion? An opinion is a statement that cannot be objectively proved true or false. Opinions usually express beliefs, feelings, judgments that a person may have on a subject or about a subject. For instance, the Alhamra Arts Council building is the most beautiful building in Lahore. The Alhamra Arts Council building is the most beautiful building in Lahore. Fine, that may be your opinion. It, may, it might not be my opinion. Now there is no way that this statement can be proved because people can look at the same building and come to different conclusions about its beauty. Just as I, I, I said earlier, I might consider it beautiful, but somebody else might not. Beautiful, mind you, is a value word. What's a value word? A value word is a word we use to express our judgment. Now remember, value words are signals that an opinion is being expressed. And you, as the reader, have your antennas, have your antennas on the lookout for these value words. These value words, by their very nature, represent opinions, not facts. Example, if you came across this statement, the Prime Minister should have willed his property to the nation. The Prime Minister should have willed his property to the nation. Well, that's your opinion. That might not be somebody else's opinion. Number two, Pakistan cricket, cricket team is the best in the world. Again, this is, this is an opinion. The word best is debatable. Now to sharpen your understanding of fact and opinion, read the following statements and decide whether each one is a fact or an opinion. Number one, my brother Aslam is very handsome. My brother Aslam is very handsome. Fact or opinion? Number two, Last night there was an accident on the highway. Last night there was an accident on the highway. Number three, Muhammad Ali Bogra was the worst prime minister our country ever had. Number four, ostriches do not hide their heads in the sand. Now, statement number one, that is your opinion. Your brother is handsome. You may consider him, somebody else might not. Number two, so statement number one is an opinion. Statement number two can be verified. Last night there was an accident on the highway. It can be checked, proved true or otherwise. Number three, Muhammad Ali Bogra, well that's your opinion. We've had all sorts of prime ministers and maybe he wasn't the worst. Maybe there were, uh, there were others. That's his one person's opinion. And number four, ostriches do not hide their heads in the sand. Contrary to popular opinion, this is a fact which can be checked through observation or reports of observations. Now here are some more points about fact and opinion. When you separate fact from opinion, keep 
a few points in mind. Number one, a statement of fact may be found to be untrue. A statement of fact may be found to be untrue. Sometimes evidence may show a fact is not really true. People go and check up and they find that uh, the facts are wrong. Number two, opinions may be masked as facts. Opinions can be put across in such a way that you might think, you might accept them as facts when in, in reality, in actual fact they are not facts. But the speaker or the writer is stating them in such a way that you being a gullible person, you, you fall for the trick. Sometimes people present their opinions as if they are facts. Example, and this is very, very common. People make statements like, the economy in fact is in the worst shape it's been in for years. They say it in such a manner or they write in such a manner, they use such words that a person who is not trained will think that this writer, this speaker is actually stating a fact. Another example, in point of fact, neither candidate for the Nazim's office is well qualified. In point of fact, neither candidate for the Nazim's office is well qualified. And a third example, the truth of the matter is that frozen meat tastes as good as fresh meat. The truth of the matter is that frozen meat tastes as good as fresh meat. Now notice in these three examples, it was words like in fact, in point of fact, the truth of the matter. Now at, at the first glance, the above statements appear as statements of fact, but a closer examination will show you that they are statements of opinion. Right? Now, the third thing that you have to keep in mind is that value words often represent opinions. Value words often represent opinions. Value words, as you must have realized by now, they generally, they are generally subjective, not objective, and they express judgment while factual statements, they report on observed reality, while subjective statements interpret reality. Subjective statements are your interpretation of reality. Now, these, there are some value words like good, bad, great, best, worst, terrible, better, lovely, wonder, wonderful, worse, disgusting. There are lots of other words. So, next time, if you come across words like, oh, so and so, it is wonderful. So, you should realize that wonderful, that person who uses that word is using, is giving his own opinion. Now, if someone says to you, it is raining outside, this observation is an objective one. It can be verified. But if someone says, somebody can go out and check whether it is raining or not. But if somebody says, it is bad weather today, it is nasty weather today, that would be a subjective statement because that statement is a personal interpretation of reality. For some people, rain is good weather, especially in a place like ours, which is a dry country. We, we live in a dry country and whenever it rains, we enjoy it. 
and we would think it's it's good weather. Number four, please remember that much of what we read and hear is a mixture of fact and opinion. I mean, if people were all the time speaking facts, you know, and talking about facts, it would be very, very boring. And uh, we, uh, you must have noticed uh, that when we talk, we insert our opinions all the time. We give our personal interpretation of reality. Now, recognizing facts and opinions is important because a lot of information that we read and hear is really opinion. You might for instance read or hear the following statements. You might hear uh, or read about a, politi a politician saying, my record in the National Assembly is outstanding. You might come across an advertisement which claims that a particular model of a car is the most economical on the road. You know, I won't name any brand, but you do come across uh, ads in the paper saying the most economic, economical on the road. This car doesn't use that much petrol. Now, both these statements are opinions. In the first uh, statement, it is the word outstanding. The word outstanding should alert you. If somebody, if a politician says, my record is outstanding, all right, it needs to be checked into. And the second one, the most economical, also needs to be probed. What does the politician exactly mean? The second statement seems very factual, but what is meant by economical? Now, if the car, if the car that is being advertised is offering more miles per hour per liter of petrol, but if it offers the worst record for expensive repairs, then surely it is not economical. So far, you have read single statements. Now, you will read a passage and be on the lookout for opinion. Now, remember that much, much of what we read is actually opinion. We tend to accept what we read as fact, but most of it is a mixture of fact and opinion. And this exercise will help you to think for yourself and question what you read. The first passage. There were several queens of Egypt by the name of Cleopatra, which also includes the one who ruled in the time of Caesar and Antony, rulers of Rome. She is one of the most interesting figures in world and Egyptian history. According to historical records, she was born in 69 BC and died almost 40 years later. The story of how she died is very fascinating and easy to believe. Reports say that she killed herself by letting a cobra bite her. As the Egyptian cobra was a symbol of royalty, so it was a good way for a queen to end her life. In the passage that you've just read, there are six sentences. Three of these sentences are facts, two are opinion, and one combines fact and opinion. Let us go back to that passage and see for ourselves. We'll examine it and see which sentence is fact and which is opinion and which is a combination of both. Sentence number one. There were several queens of Egypt by the name of Cleopatra, which also includes the one who ruled in the time of Caesar and Antony, rulers of Rome. Now, this sentence, it contains facts only, which may be found and checked in any historical book, historical records. Sentence number two. 
She is one of the most interesting figures in world and Egyptian history. Now, this sentence expresses an opinion. To some, Cleopatra may not be an interesting figure. Sentence number three. According to historical records, she was born in 69 BC and died almost 40 years later. Sentence, this sentence is entirely based on facts, historical facts, which can be checked. Number four, the story of how she died is very fascinating and easy to believe. Again, it's an opinion. How fascinating and easy to believe will differ from person to person. Sentence number five. Reports say that she killed herself by letting a, a cobra bite her. It's a fact which can be checked. And historical facts do say that she died of snake bite. And the last sentence. As the Egyptian cobra was a symbol of royalty, so it was a good way for a queen to end her life of fact and opinion because uh, the Egyptian cobra was a symbol of royalty and it, it is called the asp, A-S-P. In, in some books you might come across the word asp which is it's a kind of a, a cobra and that was a symbol of royalty and uh, the second half of the sentence that, that it was a good way for a queen to die, well, it's an opinion. Now, let us look at another short passage which will help you discriminate between, this, between simple reporting of something that actually happened and the more or less straightforward expression of approval or disapproval. It's a passage about plants. Although weeds are also plants, there is something negative about the name. R. W. w. Emerson, an American poet, once described a weed as a plant whose virtues have not yet been discovered. Weeds aren't really so bad after all. For instance, they can replenish depleted topsoil with minerals. Also, some weeds contain vitamins and are edible. Very interesting passage. Let us look at the passage. Statement number one. Although, although weeds are also plants, there is something negative about the name. Number two, Emerson, an American poet, described the first sentence and look at the second sentence. The third one says, weeds aren't really so bad after all. It shows the writer's approval that they aren't really so bad after all. And then he gives reasons. They can replenish depleted topsoil and some, knee, some weeds contain vitamins and are edible. Right. Now, let us look at, now you will see uh, an exercise on your screen and decide, read those statements and decide whether they are facts or opinions. Number one, Edgar Allan Poe is the greatest writer of horror stories in the world. Is this statement a fact or opinion? Number two, Poe had to leave the University of Virginia because he couldn't pay his debts. Fact or opinion? You decide for yourself. Number three, Edgar Allan Poe should not have drunk so much. Edgar Allan Poe should not have drunk so much. Fact or opinion? 
Lovecraft has often been compared to Edgar Allan Poe, fact or opinion. When Lovecraft died, he was practically unknown. Lovecraft died in conditions of shameful neglect. Number seven, Lovecraft's stories are far more horrible than those of Edgar Allan Poe, fact or opinion. Edgar Allan Poe's stories reflect his powerful imagination and his love for analysis. Baudelaire wrote that Edgar, Poe's, Edgar Allan Poe pursued imagination and subjected it to the most stringent analysis. It is because of Baudelaire that Edgar Allan Poe became famous in France. Now you will see three passages on your screen and they all deal with the sun, S-U-N. Read them and decide for yourself what kind of passages they are, whether they are based on fact, opinion, they show approval, disapproval. Number one, you might like to ask why the sun is able to supply its own light, heat and energy, whereas the earth and the other planets only shine feebly with the aid of borrowed light. Strange as it may seem, it is best to start this problem by considering the interior of the earth. The morrow brought a very sober looking morning, the sun making only a few efforts to appear and Catherine augured from it everything most favorable to her wishes. A bright morning so early in the year she allowed would generally turn to rain but a cloudy one foretold improvement as the day advanced. Your mother and I were so happy then. It seemed as though we had everything we could ever want. I think the last day the sun shone was when that dirty little train steamed out of that crowded, suffocating Indian station and the battalion band playing for all it was worth. I knew in my heart it was all over then. Everything. That was the first half of your lesson in which we looked at facts and opinions, how to differentiate facts from opinions. Now the second half of the lesson, we will look at markers that are used for enumerating the order in which things are to be said when you make lists or give instructions. On the website, it doesn't mention those markers which outline the time sequences in which events occur. Now, it is equally important to recognize the sequence of events, especially in such activities as scheduling, recounting historical facts, doing routine activities, and conducting and des describing experiments. Now, as we know, events do not simply occur. They occur either before, during or after other events. This time sequence, this is known as time sequence, this time sequence may be chronological, logical or causal. Once a time reference has been established, certain adjectives and adverbials may order subsequent information in relation to it. You will see a few tables which are examples of time relators. Now, these are adjectives which will tell you about time. The adjective earlier, former, preceding, previous, 
they are known as time relators. When you come across such words, you will know at once that there is some reference being made to things that have taken place before what you are in what you are reading the, the, the occurrence of words like earlier, preceding, former, previous will give you the signal that it is referring to events that took place before the event that you are reading about. And there are adverbs, adverbials such as already, prior, before, before that, before then, first, formally, up to now, until now or you may have the word until then, un up to now, so far, yet, in the beginning, long ago. Now these were time relators. Example, look at these sentences. The memory storage capacity of earlier computers was not as large as those today. And here it's the word earlier that tells you that there were computers before the computers that you see today, earlier computers. And their memory storage was not as large as the ones that you have today. Number two, when the first digital computer was developed, the first analog computer had already been in use for some time. Here the word already tells you that something took place before that and that is that the first analog computer was there before the first digital computer. It is the word already that gives you the sequence of, t uh, of computers the sequence of their invention. Number three, up to now computers have not created too much unemployment. Up to now, it is this phrase up to now meaning sometime in the past to the present. Computers have not created too much unemployment. Now look at the next table. And here you will find that words are given you which show simultaneous simultaneousness, how things take place at the same time. They are words which denote that things are taking place at the same time. For instance, you have words like uh, adjectives like contemporary, simultaneous, adverbials, like at present, at this point, now, today, for the time being, at the moment, meanwhile, in the meantime, when, at the same time. These are all words, phrases which relate time. Computers might be used in the future as simultaneous translating machines and it is the word simultaneous which is referring to time, meaning at the same time, at the same period, two things happening at the same time. Number two, at present computers are used for printing newspapers at present, meaning it is a phrase which refers, refers to time that is contemporary time, con time related now, related to now. At present computers are used for printing newspapers. Number three, in the future computers will probably replace most of our daily activities, but in the meantime scientists are still trying to develop computers to their full potential and the phrase in the meantime again 
it relates to a time period in the time it is related to the future and now between now and the future means in the meantime while this thing is happening in the meantime this is also taking place now we've got we've also got words in english that refer to the time period that took place long after a certain event we've got time references subsequent time references such as the word after and again these are adjectives and adverbials you've got adjectives like following later next and adverbials like afterwards after that eventually since since then by the time by the end soon next we will look at some examples number 1 since the development of the chip computers have become cheaper and more compact since the development of the chip computers have become cheaper and more compact and it's the word since it is it is referring to something that took place after since the development of the chip something took place after the development of the chip and that was computers have become cheaper and more compact number 2 you should have a good basic understanding of computers by the time you finish this reading course you should have a good basic understanding of computers by the time you finish this reading course now the phrase by the time is re- related to a definite time period and that is after after you finish this reading course you should have a good basic understanding of computers and number 3 after the development of transistors the l- later computers were much faster after the development of transistors the later computers were much faster and it's the word after now time sequence is also shown by different verb tenses you use adjectives adverbials to show time sequence after in the meantime or before events that took before events that take took place after and events that are taking place now but we also can show time sequence by different verbs by using different verb tenses examples when ivar bush had built the first analog computer long before professor aiken and some men at ibm invented the first digital computer and here we have the verb had built the verb phrase had built this is also marking time for you it is a time marker had built the second sentence at the rate computer technology is growing computers as we know them today will soon become obsolete will soon become obsolete and we have the the verb is growing the verb phrase is growing and will become is growing refers to contemporary period now at the rate it is growing and will become the phrase 
the verb phrase will become refers to the future. So, you notice that we have time markers in the shape of adverbs, ad adverbials, adverbial phrases, adjectives and even verb tenses. Now, look at the sample paragraph on your screen and notice all the time markers that are there. Computers as we know them today haven't been around for a long time. It wasn't until the mid 1940s that the first working digital computer was completed. But since then, computers have evolved tremendously. Vacuum tubes were used in the first generation computers at the beginning of the 1960s. By the end of the 1960s, transistors were replaced by tiny integrated circuit boards and consequently, a new generation of computers was on the market. Fourth generation computers are now produced with circuits that are much smaller than before and fit on a single chip. Soon, fifth generation computers will be produced and these will no doubt be better than their predecessors. Now, I hope you were able to pick out all the time markers in that sample paragraph. It should not be difficult. Now, uh, read the another paragraph and as you read, underline the time relators. There are some who say that computers have a very short history, but because they are machines that manipulate numbers, others disagree. More than 5000 years ago, a need to count was recognized and somebody had the idea of using first his fingers, then pebbles to keep track of the count. Now. Is there any time relator? Are there any words or a phrase that is related to time? And it is the phrase more than 5000 years ago. History is not clear as to whether the need was recognized before or after the idea occurred. Since that time, the abacus was invented and some form of it was used well into the 16th century. During the 17th and 18th centuries, many easy ways of calculating were devised. Logarithm tables, calculus and the basis for the modern slide rule were born out of that period of time. It was not until the early 1800s that the first calculating machine appeared and not too long after, Charles Babbage designed a machine which became the basis for building today's computers. Now, with that we end today's lesson. I hope you will continue to read and improve your skill. Allah Hafiz, see you next time.